<laughs> okay, moving up to somebody else who's trying to kill the industry. <laughs> oh, um, did y'all hear about AT and T's fit of brilliance? What? No. Oh, AT and T's had a fit of brilliance. It's in what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, are we skipping the Obama death No, no, skip that stuff. Skip, skip that stuff. That's political. Rusty, are you talking about the credit slam that whole AT&T plan to, I mean, uh, charge app makers for data usage? Yes. Wait, what? how are they going to do this? They're going to charge, what did you just say? If you make an app and your app uses data, you're going to foot the bill for all the people who use your app. How, how does that work? Huh? Click on the link, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Nothing I can say will justify it. Someone who's a developer. I'd love it to AT&T to come up with some bullshit like this. Yeah, I mean, basically, if they push that through, I tell you exactly what's going to happen. The industry will suddenly abandon apps and say, we got to make this HTML5. They'll go right back to the browser. They won't. They, they'll say, fuck it. Our apps will be less functional. They'll work only through the browser. We ain't paying this bandwidth usage. <laughs> Leave it to the phone companies to screw the crap up some more. Yeah. You know, I would I will say this: the phone companies are the number one reason why Apple's profits are so high because they get a free subsidy. Uh, one and number two, they're also the reason why Android's market share is also larger. But it's interesting when you take it to the tablet market, where carriers are no longer in play. You know, if Android did consolidate and not have so much of the, the carrier worry, uh, I think they would have a better time in, in, in the tablet, in, in, you know, to, 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 to win over some of that fluff that's out there and, versus always playing, it seems like Android's playing catch up in the tablet market because they're not, they're not fully sure yet. On, 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 on what to execute or what to offer, in my opinion, is how it's looking like. But these, what is a world without carriers going to look like? I would love that world. You know, I, 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 I wish we could just all go over, you know, voice over IP. We're done with data caps and all this other crap. You know, maybe we just add a service to our, our existing internet uh, service providers. You know, for whatever nominal fee, and then you know that increases our. Data usage. The, 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 here's the re here, the problem I see with AT and T's proposed thing here. For if you were wondering what they're doing, you, you know what a one eight hundred number is, right, Marcel? Uh -huh. You know, it's like you call it, but you don't pay right. to call it. The person who's hosting the person it. Is receiving it. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what they want to offer here. Basically, apps will be able to offer a data not counted feature. You know, the equivalent of a one eight hundred number. The, the problem with this is that basically it, it's, it's a potential doubling of their cost to pay out things out because they are still having to pay for their servers, their stuff. You know, they're already paying for usage. And then they're going to have to pay yeah, for how it. Is that, exactly. How is that going to work in the U.S.? To get a credit system? Is it like a credit? Because right now I can't even see it. The way our data networks work as it is, they're already complaining about lack of technology and crippling bandwidth. So... I can see it now. It's like you get a coupon that you pay from the app and it goes to your credit and to your bill. But what you just said is actually how most of the world operates. Most of the world operates to the person originating the phone call pays it. The one who's receiving doesn't. Right. Um, and, and only in the U.S. do, do both people use the fucking say Exactly. Yeah, you know that, that's the stupid shit. It, it's I, it, I, that is the greatest scam we have come up with. Hi, both of you are gonna pay for it one hundred percent. What? What? <laughs> if uh, I, I mean, I I have an iPhone that has no carrier service because it's an iPod Touch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. So how does? Now, does an iPod Touch? No, they don't have data. There's no, uh, is there an iPod Touch with data? Not with no. 3G. Uh, if, it, if it had 3G3, then it would be an iPhone. Right. It's just all well, iPod. Maybe it'd be, a, it'd be a smaller form of the iPad. Uh, okay, so, you got these apps that would have to know, yeah, they're deep. 
basically, it, it, basically, what it's going to be is you submit the app to the marketplace, but you, you as your app is tagged with some equivalent thing for the AT and T network. Where if people on the AT and T network access your app, AT and T sends you a bill every month for their data usage uh, for being that app developer. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, it, in theory, good, but unless they're bulk competitive rates, I mean, I don't see developers being willing to pay ten dollars a gig. I don't see that. It's like you get a successful app, you go bankrupt. It's like, yay! <laughs> it's like, no, well, they would pass that cost on to the consumer. Oh, well, then the apps would have to become twenty nine ninety five, forty nine ninety five, and that's that's the only way they'd be able to even remotely cope with that. That's and I do you honestly see the app the app quitty people going from splurging ninety nine cents to five bucks on average to splurging twenty to seventy five bucks on average? I mean. 99, 99 cents to five bucks is an impulse buy. Yeah, if what it says, they're using the rebate model. In economics, when I took it, at least you know, back a few years, more than a few years ago, um, we, back then, rebates, I think only 36% of the population actually used rebates. And I can see this now. You pay for your data use and I think that's how at and is expecting to profit from it. It's, kind of, it's, it's, it's the rebate model, it's the gift card model, where it, it, it's not going to get fully used and they get to reap the, 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 the difference in pennies, essentially. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that winds up working. If it gets implemented at all, it's not. I mean, we're not even going to get a, a really hard thing till next year. They're like, they're well, you, know, I, you know, BlackBerry is allowing carriers to have their own applications within App World, which is interesting. And the carriers are loving this. Although you, you it's, you're, it's not forced upon you, but you, but you, your carrier, you know, depending on your BlackBerry and Verizon, AT and T or Sprint, you, your carrier will have its own little department of uh, applications that are that they like in their own little catalog. Are you going to be able to remove these applications or are you going to yeah, run into the... You don't have to install them. If you can uninstall them or install them. It's uh, okay, because that became a real problem on Android. The carriers installed this bloat so spyware... Or anything like that. It's like uh, a segment... It's like, hey, this it's is a separate section of the market. Yeah, it's like this is the AT&T store part of Apple. I guess it's, a, it's exclusivity and where AT&T or Verizon or whomever can exploit and say, yeah, we're going to allow this app, which other third parties probably can't do, you know, do without maybe a tether plan or something like that. I, I can see it going that direction where, okay, okay you pay that exclusivity to have that, that application. But it's, it's clearly there. And from what I'm reading, uh, the carriers are really enjoying this uh, I guess their own little department section in the Apple catalog. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But it's nothing forced. I actually don't have any AT&T apps on my head. Well, the original Android devices didn't have any yada yada apps until, yeah. Until the carriers. So Blackberry, Blackberry has always had a history of, of, of having a mantra to keep out, even against government when it comes to ba <laughs> when it comes to the threat of banning the BlackBerry from their country. They're, they're pretty uh, tough customers. I mean, they've got their own uh, back-ends. VES is not as much needed today because of ActiveSync, but people forget there's still a lot of uh, group-wise users out there, and there's still a lot of Lotus Notes uh, people out there that still need the VES the back end of, of Black Area. Yeah, you know, right for the other word for it uses Lotus Notes still. It's still a powerful <laughs> application. You just don't see it all that much, but it's still very powerful. Yeah, that's true. Um, moving uh, more wise in the mobile sh uh, in the mobile data league is stuff. Um, but this is interesting that we there's like a pledge. In the mobile arena, there's this co-
people can try to get together to create a standards for accessing people's data. Because uh, of all the privacy concerns about the apps spying on people and so forth. Uh, I, I, you know, this is making news because people are just, you know, all right, do you agree to let this screensaver spy on your address book? Why does a screensaver need my address book? I mean, I, I'm sorry, but it's kind of obvious that a lot of people were using people's ignorance to basically do data mining. You know, because it, it, it's profitable. You know, oh well, okay. Here's my gift to you in exchange for something that's worth 800 times as much. <laughs> if this keeps up, I'm gonna tell you right now. If this, if this kind of thing keeps up, we're going right back to what the majority of these Apple purists hate, and that's a third-party plugin world. Because I live this when it web standards. And, 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 and I don't want to say web when web functionality first came out, we had a tremendous amount of power mm -hmm. to make make app, literally just badass applications that eventually just got shut down because of security concerns. And well, and honestly, that is exactly what is going on in the mobile arena right now. Because these people realize, holy fucking shit. We have access to everything on this thing. We can mine the bejesus out of these people, and nine out of ten of them will just click yes. Mm -hmm. And guess what that led to? Well, beyond wanting to have like CGI type dynamic activity, the real reasons plugins existed was that they became the gateway to things that programmers wanted to use within the system to bridge the gap between, to, between by making the website productive, essentially. And you can't augment all of this stuff in the cloud. I can't stand this, like, well, we're just going to put an iCloud. Well, that, that's, that's rubbish. All you're doing is syncing. That's not essentially giving you access to total things. Not yeah, and and you know like what? That. On the whole cloud thing, because it's such a buzzword, I, I, you know what? In the last three weeks, I had 12 separate people make the offhand comment to me, well, they just need to put that in the cloud so it'll just work everywhere and I don't need to update this well, application. No, yeah. But they think that people who know nothing about this stuff think that can be done. Well, I mean, all you can do is just kind of give them a little, a little smirk and just say, well, you know, I guess you just don't do much computing. I mean, that's it's, it's just a... No, no, it's not that they don't do much they computing. Don't. It's not. that they don't understand what would be necessary to put this... Right. powerful local application cloud based where it still was actually this powerful application. Right. <laughs> yeah, so let's just put it to this user. Let's say let's say they have a um, an app that that their company decided to put in iOS. And they use it for their business. Okay, they they have iOS devices, whether it's an iPhone or iPad. Apple's not gonna let that all participate within the cloud. Or they're going to go right to what BlackBerry's model, where the costs, you know, where the costs go up, and that may be one avenue of doing it. But then it's still going to have some sort of augmentation where it's not totally pure access to what you want. So let's say you need access to this app because that would be great for this app to be able to communicate outside with this with this portal so that you can pass the information. This is not participating in iCloud or, or whatever right now, and that's exactly what plugins like ActiveX and other things. Service now we didn't find many plugins in other browsers because IE had the monopoly on Windows and let's be frank Windows was, is the dominant workforce operating system so you didn't really have other operating systems uh, out there other than a niche markets that also had plugins that most people don't even know about that became the single gateways to bridging local data to what we do want to share and send to somebody else and, without security concerns and 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 and. That is exactly the world that came down from wanting to create standards, and it's, it's a happy-go-lucky world that slowly gets sectioned off, shut down, and then becomes security conscious, which is a good thing, becoming security conscious. But don't come at me and say, well, we can have HTML5 standards and all this other crap when HTML5 gets shut down by its own by its own inheritance of saying, well, it's not going to have access unless it has a plug-in to the local operating system that needs to pass the information on, because that would be a total security breach without using the plug-in. I, I, I know. I, 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 I agree we're going to have the plugins. I just think they're going to wind up being built into the browsers and the platforms. 
it's still going to require an install, is it not? I mean, do you, are you going to get Mozilla, Chrome, you know, and Google and IE to all agree on that? We no, no. That? We're going to have the same bull crap we have now where all of them pick one and we have to write, write it three times. Okay, here's for you, here's for you, here's for you. Okay, the three of you go have fun. <laughs> I know that's what it's going to be. It's, it's not going to get rid of this problem of... You know, I, every time I make a web page, if I make it right, I do it once for IE, once for Mozilla, once for WebKit. Right. And that's just what I have to yeah. do. And, and, and the, I, I, I know as these browsers evolve, these plugins will get built into them, and uh, the mobile ones are starting to run... Uh, versions that are symbiotic with the desktop one. You know, Chrome's coming to Android. We have Firefox moving to Sun. Safari on OS 10 is evolving more, which is WebKit based. But I know I'm going to have to do the same shit. Here's for you. Here's for you. Here's for you. And I may have to add three or four more to that. It's just, it's just what it's going to be. You know. <laughs> yeah, and the crowd predominantly that argue, let's say against Flash, and I was one of them in the old days. That's the artsy fartsy of, of design saying, you know, they want to have, you know, one open standard that's easier for them to code and all that. But the real existence of plugins wasn't essentially to do that. ActiveX is not there to make your day and say, oh, yes, add lollipops there and make them shiny. You know, it, the, the, even, even when Flash came about, Flash be, began to become fully featured by having backends and tapping into other things with ActionScript. I mean, and now you even have a lot of websites out there that use all the backends that are balking at saying, well, we've got a lot of mess of this. We don't want to have to change um, to, the, to this new end. Because a lot of them like the shell security that, that Flash provided in this closed application that can't be read, essentially, off of browsers. And it's, it's, it's creating this other problem. Even to, you know, I ran to a customer that I don't really do much design. But they were arguing that even HTML5 and using SVG with vector graphics is a pain in the ass in HTML5. Oh, which yeah, is, no. Which it's is just, easily solvable in Flash to, to, to resize, basically, based on resolution. Uh, uh, here's the thing. I think as it evolves, it will get just as easy, if not easier. But the problem is the tools, there isn't a toolbox for creating all these canvas vector things right now. So they're largely done manually, which is... A pain in the butt, <laughs> uh, but the tools will get created uh, and there'll be transition things. But they aren't there yet because we are not officially in that world, yeah. even though we're using those things. Yeah, and, so as the, yeah, as the security closes down, I, I, these people that are all happy go lucky about the iOS model, they're going to have to get used to changes. And, and, and it's 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 like I said, hey. They're experimenting with all these social avenues with Twitter and all this other shit. Microsoft has been there and done that back in the damn 90s, and they already learned their lesson from that. Now. I'm not so sure about that. I mean, the other what the frick story we have in here is, will Apple's mountain lion make Microsoft and Facebook BFFs? You know, it's, and I'm not sure that's an unreasonable shot. You know what? We, we, yeah. but look, at more, look, at, look at all the new system breaches that aren't extinct. They're not exploited yet. Uh, but I, I, I know. Are, you know that are starting to occur. Even on iOS, it's like, oh, well, we didn't realize you could do that. And and I'm talking about like the, accessing the address uh, contacts and all those other things. The more stuff gets sandboxed, the more you're going to need proprietary plugin portals that that have authorization to do the bridging. And that's the best end game. Uh, Y'all should uh, take a look at the image in that uh, BFF story. Just, uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the end of this video. It's just wrong. It's, it's we know what they're talking about, but the fact that they, <laughs> it's just yeah. Yeah, and people are. That's kind of going against the grain of. of uh, Old Mac users, oh my gosh, we need a gatekeeper and all this other stuff. Well, yeah, you start. You do need a gatekeeper now because OS X is beginning to enter, and more so, really, into the realm of fluff, which is this, this Twitter and Facebook and all these other social shit that actually Microsoft tried to provide to other types of social networks that existed way back when, 
remember like news groups and all that other crap and dynamic content running on a simple post that would come in and infect your computer. People forgot all this shit. You know, but this all this existed. It may not have been as pretty. And, and, but, but people using news groups and emails and, and uh, running web pages on your desktop and all that, we've been there, done that. And it created massive problems. And, and, you know, this stuff has never happened before. It's brand new technology. We just invented it. <laughs> I'm just saying that I, 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 I'm glad that Apple is running around because Microsoft paid the price for doing, doing the fixes after the fact. Apple's like, yeah, well, this is reality. Sorry. Well, I, Apple has, Apple's been doing some fixes after the fact, too. Let's be honest. I know, here. but this is, I, I think that this is. I, I think this is a better response than Microsoft has ever had. Yeah, and on that note... <laughs> I've lived it, dude. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean the way to fix things is after? <laughs> I mean, you can never predict everything, but at least it's a damn good thing. I mean, it, it, Microsoft should have had the UAC long before it did it this time. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, that. you can say that in hindsight, but look at all the problems that came from... Come on, wrestling. I mean, I'm like, yes, this is so cool. Let's do this. It's no, honestly, I am yeah. firmly in the other camp. Since the change, even though I am one of the people who talked about all these theoretical exploits before they ever happen. I said, you do realize this can be done, this can be done, this can be done. And, you know, five, ten years later, you know, the same people who are laughing in my face are going, do you have any other stray thoughts like that? As a, oh, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, but it, I, I miss the days when the systems were open by default and we took stuff away because with it, lo with it being more and more locked down, it, it it makes things way harder than they have to be, and the reality is they're still not secure. You cannot fully secure a system and have it be usable uh, and on. Speak, like yeah. Okay, moving into. Well, well, this, like, this hasn't commented. We can read this. Uh, I blame Act the Bets. Act the Bets has powerful components. You know, we use that instead. Of, I mean, we used. Uh, it used to be called Pussy X's back when they were 16 bit and all that stuff. And then ActiveX made it 32 bit. But I'll tell you a lot of, uh, like in the energy business, ActiveX became powerful with PLC logic and stuff like that. And all I remember was that they had, during, when, this, uh, when XP and Vista came out, ActiveX had complete control of the desktop. Mm -hmm. And Hacker just had a filter. Oh, yeah. that was, and that was called Active Desktop. Oh, yeah. Desktop <laughs> page. All I remember was hackers loved it. It was like Christmas. Oh, yeah, it was like a fun playground. <laughs> yeah, another computer. Yeah. This is funny. I like this, this picture. It says, keep children close. Pick up children without bending. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm looking at that thing. Everything in there is directly contrary to the natural instincts we train. It's like, okay, lift without bending, and for God's sakes, if you're attacked, fight back. 